Welcome back to Rosario, Argentina. We are here today out on the streets again. And today we're going to be making a video about Lionel Messi. Lionel Messi. Now on this channel we have made videos about uh, Diego Maradona. And today we're going to make a video about one of the other great Argentine soccer players, Lionel Messi. So, come along. Thanks for clicking on the video. If you want to help out the channel and help it grow, I really would appreciate it. Click on the like button down there, the subscribe button, and the little bell next to it to be notified for when new videos drop. It really helps the channel grow because it's going to help the YouTube algorithm recognize this content and spread it to other YouTube viewers. If you'd like to support the channel monetarily, I would appreciate that as well. You can leave a super thanks by clicking this thanks button here and give a small donation to the channel. I appreciate your support. So back to the video. Enjoy. This is it. This is the house. This is the house where the great one grew up. So now we've seen the Casa de Maradona, and here, Casa de Messi. And Messi really is, uh, Messi and Maradona, they really are the, the two greatest Argentine soccer players. Both number 10, which I think is very cool. And there it is. There's the house. Now I think at some point we're going to go see the sports museum that is nearby here as well but we just happened to be driving by here with my two friends and, and uh, we decided we'd take a look. So here it is, Casa de Messi. Pretty cool. Here it is, the main entrance. The main entrance to Club, Club Atletico Newell's Old Boys. Now, there is of course a long and storied history of this club, like most athletic clubs in Argentina. But, Club Atletico Newell's Old Boys is actually the first club, and really the only club in Argentina, where the great Lionel Messi played. When he was a kid, when he was young, like 12, 13 years old, I think, he played here. This was the first club where he played. And uh, the interesting thing about Messi is because he was a... Uh, dual citizen, right? He was a citizen of Argentina and of Spain. When, after he played here uh, at Newell's Old Boys, he actually went to Barcelona and he played and went to school in Barcelona and then he played professionally first for Barcelona. After that, he played professionally for Paris Saint Germain and he actually never played professionally here in Argentina, although he is a legend here in Argentina for uh, playing for the Argentine national team. Now when he had the chance to choose which team he was going to play for, the national teams, um, because he was a dual citizen, he could have played for Argentina or he could have played for Spain, but he chose to play here in Argentina. And he ended up helping them, uh, of course, win the famous World Cup. And so. He is like the, uh, one of the legends, the legends of not just of soccer um, here in Argentina, but just of, you know, athletes and, and pop culture figures and historical figures in general. He is like super, super uh, famous and uh, just a legend, a legend. You see him all over the place. And uh, even though now he, uh, he splits his time, I think he, res he has houses all over the place. The dude's super rich. Um, and I think he has some houses uh, here in Argentina in different places. I, I, I did remember hearing that he had a house in uh, North Delta, the super, super, super rich uh, area of Buenos Aires. Um, but also he plays for Inter Miami in the United States. So, but this was it. This was the spot right here. Club Atletico Newell's Old Boys, where he began uh, playing. All right, we're here, Sports Museum. There it is, Museo, Museo de Deportes 
Safesino. Well, the sports museum. I'm really excited about this place, honestly, because like, not only are we gonna get to see stuff about Messi, right? But we're gonna get to see stuff about other sports and other like famous athletes from here in Argentina. Super excited. Uh, it's free to get in, but you have to um, you have to like reserve a ticket ahead of time for a certain time. We're here a little bit early, and uh, I think if you come, you have to bring your passport too, because they asked for the passport number. I brought it just in case. So let's head in, see what they got in here. All right, right out here getting uh, getting like a little something to eat because we're here a little bit early. And right here on the side of the truck, on the side of the Jordi truck. There he is, right there. Lionel Messi. Lionel Messi. Man, this is getting me really, really amped up to go in this museum. All right, we got our choripan. We got our choripan right here. Delicious. Pull these things out. We got about 15 minutes before we go, uh, before we go into the museum. Got a little drink. Just enough time to uh, have a little something to eat. Oh, that was really good. That hit the spot so hard. We got here a little bit early, and uh, right over here, there it is. We saw it, the chori truck. They're cooking up chori panes. Oh man, it was great. When you come here, if you're hungry, there's a chori pan truck right outside. Inside, waiting to pick up our ticket. Uh, there's a little box office. Like I said, everything's free to get in, but you have to reserve a ticket online because it's timed entry. So they have like a group that is able to enter at a certain time and, you know, to keep the traffic like flow down because it's a very popular museum. Anyway, right here in the lobby, it's super cool. Super duper cool. Very excited about this. Yo, check it out. Right downstairs, there's Messi on the wall and look at the trophies. Oh boy, there's gonna be there's gonna be some awesome uh, like World Cup stuff in here for sure. For those of you who do not follow soccer or have been living under a rock, um, Argentina recently won the World Cup. It was kind of a big deal. So they definitely have multiple sports here. Actually, I just ran into a couple of people who are here doing like research for a college thesis and they were we were chatting and they said, yeah, they have different sports here, right? So Los Juegos, I think this is like like for uh, like Olympics basically, the games, uh, but like at Atletismo, I think that's like track and field, volleyball, tennis, boxing, Now, the other sports, of course, like soccer is super, super popular in Argentina, right? It's like the, the most popular sport. Pretty much anywhere in South America, it's like the most popular sport. But also very popular in Argentina, basketball, um, auto racing, uh, tennis is relatively popular here, and also boxing. Boxing is super popular in Argentina. So I'm really excited to see like what other stuff they've got here. We're right here track and field at El Grafico. Now, there's gonna be a lot of people, honestly, who I don't recognize, that are probably super famous Argentine athletes. And maybe we'll learn a little bit more, like this guy, Delfo Cabrera. I have no idea who this guy is. I mean, they have a giant picture of him on El Grafico, which is like a very famous magazine in Argentina. So, looks like he's a marathon, Olympic marathoner. Won the gold medal in... 1948 in London. Super cool. This is really cool. This is, I guess, dedicated to the Olympics. They have all the Olympic rings and all these different screens along here with information about different Olympic games. There's 1948 in London. The 1936 Berlin Games. Dark Omens. One of the things that I'm super excited to see here, that I'm, I'm almost positive that they have stuff here about this guy, is Andres Nocioni. That's right, Andres Nocioni, Chapu. 
Lucioni. He's a famous Argentine basketball player, and I love that guy, and I love him because he played for the Chicago Bulls. My team, Chicago Bulls. Andres Nocioni. I am super excited to see stuff about Andres Nocioni because, so he, like, he's definitely not, like, the most famous player on the Chicago Bulls. He's also not, like, the best player on the Chicago Bulls. In fact, he probably wasn't even the best player on the team that he played for in the Chicago Bulls. He played for a Chicago Bulls team that was, like, good, f starting to get good for the first time. Basically, in the 1990s, Chicago Bulls won tons of championships. Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, Dennis Rodman. Uh, legendary teams and that's when I was a kid uh, I got to see all that and then after that team imploded there was just like disaster the team was very bad for several years and Andres Nocioni was a player on the team that was like first starting to get good again and you could have some hope and some potential right so it was very very cool and he has a ton of heart he's not the most highly skilled player on that team but he he was always the guy like putting in 100% effort, diving for loose balls, grabbing rebounds. He was tough, he had heart, right? And it, like Chicago Bulls fans love that dude. And I am a Chicago Bulls fan, so I love that dude, Andres Nocioni. And I'm excited to see, hopefully some Andres Nocioni stuff in the museum. Here we have Atletismo Adapto, which I think is like the Paralympics. Oh yeah, exactly, yeah, Paralympics. And the different medals in the Paralympics. This was... Who is this? So Susana Olarte. Susana Olarte, nine. Whoa, wow. She won nine medals for uh, Paralympic basketball. Damn. That's a ton. Nine medals is a lot. Nuestras clubes en la liga. So here, these are like Santa Fe. Let's see. Yeah, these are all like Rosario and Santa Fe clubs. These are all from like Santa Fe province, I think, right? Here's Club Atlético Rosario Central. We have New Newell's, Newell's Old Boys. They should be on here, right? I would think. Fisherton, San Carlos. Hmm, I don't see him. Hmm. I would. I, I thought that Newell's Old Boys would be on here. Maybe this. Maybe it's a different. Like um, there may be different tiers to the league, and maybe they're like in a in a different tier. I don't know. I, I honestly am not too familiar with how, um, like. Argentine club sports works, but I do know that there's like Club Atletico uh, Newell's Old Boys, which we've seen. Oh, we're here in the tennis section. The tennis section. Now there have been some some famous, very famous uh, Argentine tennis players. The one who I think of like immediately because she was like crushing it when I was a kid was uh, Gabriela Sabatini. And I'm sure honestly if people if people like started mentioning names of famous Argentine tennis players down in the uh, comments, I would probably recognize some of them. And old tennis racket technology. <laughs> like come on. Made with like cat gut and uh, just wooden. And then, like, it's come a long way. Like, not, not gonna lie, new, new tennis rackets, like, they're so much better than old tennis rackets. I like boxing. Boxing is a sport that I enjoy. If you really, like, get to know boxing and start to understand the sport, like, there's a lot of strategy involved and you need insane skill to be able to do it, you also need to be like tough as nails because you're gonna get you're gonna get hit a lot. But I love boxing, I really do. The sweet science, as they call it. Here we have 
a desk. I don't know whose desk this is. I, I imagine this guy, our trainer. Oh, Amilcar Brusa. Amilcar Brusa. This guy, who I guess was a boxing trainer. Acerol de Campeones. Maker of champions. Famous boxing trainer. I, I know nothing about this guy until right now. But it is cool to see. He's obviously quite famous in the uh, history of boxing in Argentina. And if he's famous, then that means that his famous butt sat right there in that chair. And now we saw it. Oh, but here it is. Basket. So, basket, right, in, like, there's a, multiple words for basketball in Spanish. Baloncesto, basketball. But here in Argentina, they just say basket. Here we are. Basket. All right, we're looking for our guy. This is our guy right here. Bam, there he is, Chapu. Andres Nocioni. Now, look, he's not the most famous uh, or even the best basketball player from Argentina. The most famous and the best basketball player from Argentina is this guy right here, Manu Ginobili. That guy's going to, he's in the Hall of Fame in the United States. Um, he won tons of championships with uh, the San Antonio Spurs in the United States. He is definitely the most famous um, and probably best basketball player in Argentina, from Argentina. But this is our guy right here, Andres Nocioni, Chapu. That's my favorite, because he was a Chicago Bull. And now we're gonna find the stuff that we can find. Like maybe they have his uniform in here. If they do, that would be so awesome. He played in uh, Galvez, which is a tiny little town. When he, this was like when he was a kid, he played in Galvez. It's like this little town. Uh, I don't know. It's about an hour and a half drive away from here in Rosario. It's in Santa Fe Province, and uh, he played at a place called uh, Ceci Ceci Basketball or Ceci Athletic Club. C E C I. Oh, look. There it is. Compare. Compara tu mano. They have a they have a thing over here where you can compare your hand to Andres Nocioni's hand. Look right here. Compara tu mano con la de Andres Nocioni. Compare your hand to Andres Nocioni's hand. Pretty close. Pretty close actually. Not gonna lie. Right? Not bad. I'm a big dude, though. Not as big as Andres Nocioni, though. I don't see his jersey here. Makes me disappointed. Disappointed. Disappointed I don't see his jersey. But we got to compare our hand to his hand. And we saw him over there on the uh, on this sign over here. Generación Dorada. Generación Dorada. This means like the gold generation. Okay, so one of the reasons why this team is super famous is because they uh, they won Olympic gold in basketball. It's the first team to uh, like wallop on the United States since the 1992 Dream Team when the United States started like putting professional players on their team. There they are. That's the uh, Argentine team that won the gold in the final versus Italy. The United States ended up winning the bronze. That was in 2004. What else do we have here? Argentinos in the NBA. Here we go. Argentines in the NBA. This is, oh, I guess this is, okay, yeah, here we go. So, 10 players, um, yeah, 10 players have been in the, in the uh, NBA, including Carlos Delfino, Walter Herman, Andres Nocioni, there's our guy, Nicolas Brusino, 
And of course, uh, that guy right there. Can never forget that guy right there, right? Manu Ginobili. Because like I mentioned, even though Andres, Andres Nocione is my favorite guy, Manu Ginobili is like, he's the guy. He's like the, uh, the Argentine, most famous Argentine basketball player. Definitely, uh, and definitely like very famous in the United States too. Andres Nocioni, a lot of people probably don't know Andres Nocioni, even if they're like, like if they're like casual basketball fans in the United States, they don't know Andres Nocioni, probably not. But, um, Manu Ginobili, everybody knows Manu Ginobili. Like every basketball fan in the United States knows, knows Manu Ginobili. We're now in the rugby section. I know nothing about rugby. I'm gonna put that out there right now. I know nothing about rugby. Other than, like, I kind of understand how it's played. I know that it's very popular in a lot of places. And, uh... I saw that movie with Matt Damon about the South African rugby team. That's about it. Whew. Look at this guy. Damn, that dude's a truck. I have a friend who played uh, played rugby. He's from Australia. He played hooker. That's the position he played. So we can call it. We can call him a hooker, and it's not bad. It's not. It's not a bad thing. All right, based specifically on design, knowing nothing about any of these teams or their history or where they play or any of that based only on how cool their uniform is. Which one do you like the most? I like... I like... That one up there. Because it has a crab on it and I think that's cool. Anyway. We'll continue on because I am like probably really offending all the rugby fans. So we'll stop doing that. Move on to sailing. Sailing. Now it makes sense that uh, sailing and like kayaking and things like this are popular in Argentina because of the massive coastline that Argentina has, uh, the many rivers in Argentina. So I imagine it makes sense that crew is very, very. Um, very popular, especially with the river, the Rio Paraná, right here. Oh, here we go, auto movilismo, auto racing. Yo, we saw, I'll link the video in the description, but we saw a museum in Cordoba, a museum of industry in Cordoba that had so, so many old Argentine um, automobiles in it, cars, and they had a couple of race cars. In fact, they had like a car that ran like the Nurburgring, that like I think like set records at the Nurburgring back in the 60s, I want to say. Check that video out. Link in the description. That place was so cool, and like it was tucked away. We just stumbled upon it, and we were like the only person there when we were walking around. That was a really cool place, man. There was awesome stuff in there. So many old, like, cool cars. Look at this thing. Look at this. Wow. They have this really cool... Look at this. This is one of the things about this museum that I will mention. It's very cool as far as, like, the things that they have just the way it's like designed uh, look at this this awesome like giant helmet with racing goggles and each one of the racing goggles is a screen with like a video looping POV of racing I mean come on that's so cool yeah the design of this museum is very like um, especially for being a free museum no joke 
Like, it is very, very high-end, the design of it. They have all these old racing helmets here. Oh, rally racing car. Oh, this is so cool. Look at how they're doing this. There, there's, there's the screen in the background, right? So it makes it look like the car is moving right past the screen. But there's projectors that are projecting, basically like the screen in the background, there's a different thing that's being projected on the side of the car. They project on the wheels because the car itself is basically just like a screen. Yeah, see like look, when it slows down they stop, the wheels stop. And then they throw the cover over the car. Now this is so cool. I kind of want to wait here and see see it start up again, so we can get like a little uh, a little more footage. Oh, look at that! That's awesome. That's so cool. They pull the the cover off of it. It's about Marcos Siena. Marcos Siani. Soy el producto acabado del sudor y el ingenio. Un año entero de desarrollo antes de salir al mar. That's so cool. This is so cool. No más tuvo una carrera. Just the way that they project everything, right? They project on the ground, like the road. So they have like different projectors that are aiming at different parts. So cool. See, look at that. When it rains, they project mud and dirt flying up on the car. The car lights on fire. When they're talking about how there was a fire in the engine, they project the fire like on the, in the car. So cool! All right, this is the part we saw already. This is so cool. Yo, like, honestly. Definitely the coolest thing I've seen in this museum and like, I'm not gonna lie, like one of the coolest things I've seen in any museum, it's a great idea. And like, it's executed so well. That was really cool. Wow. All right, I'm very impressed. I'm very impressed by this museum. Uh, I'm extremely impressed that it is free. Um, yeah, very, very impressive. And we haven't even seen any of the messy stuff, any of the soccer stuff, any of the World Cup stuff. <laughs> Football, soccer, this, clearly the most popular sport in Argentina and uh, let me tell you, Argentina, they have been very successful in the sport of soccer. There are legendary Argentine players, there are many, many Argentine players who would be considered like the greatest, you know, uh, one of the greatest players of all time, right? If you had a list of 100, 200 greatest players of all time, there would be Argentines on there for sure. Maradona would be on there. Messi would probably be on there too, to be honest. Who else? Mario Kempes. Mario Kempes. Mario Kempes is a Argentine soccer player who we didn't talk about that much on this channel. But there's going to be stuff, I'm sure, about him in here because he was a great. He also won a World Cup for Argentina in 1970s, 78, I think. Champions, Newell's. There's Newell's old boys again. Man, there's Newell's old boys everywhere. They're a very successful team. Uh, there's there's our guy Messi. In the Copa America. This is the Copa America in. Uh, 2005, I think, and here it is, Copa America. So Messi, 
a little more history about our guy, Messi. He, um, like I mentioned when we were at the uh, Estadio de Newell's Old Boys, he played there in the juniors, like when he was, when he was in, like a, a, a kid, when he was like, I don't know, under 12 years old, 6 to 12, I think, the youth league. And then he eventually um, left and went and played for uh, Barcelona. Like, he went to Spain. He was to school in Spain. Um, he actually had, like, a lot of, uh, like, he had a medical, like, a deficiency, a hormone deficiency for growth hormone. And so he was getting treatments in Spain. He's actually kind of small. He's not a very big guy. And he was getting treatments in Spain. And then he eventually played professionally in Spain for Barcelona. Oh, in fact... Here, look right here. There it is, Messi. Kids, are, kids are bowing down to him. But there it is. That's his. That's his Barcelona jersey. Rosario Central looks like they were the champions of the Comebol Cup, Copa Comebol, in 1995. I did not know this. I don't know the history too much of the Rosario teams. Um, honestly, but Rosario Central, hey! Here's the wall of Messi right here. Here's our guy, Lionel Messi. All the magazines from all over the world. This must be, I think this is like his, his teacher, right? At, his, at school when he was a kid. Yeah, there he is, Lionel Messi. Even when he was a kid, apparently the story is that like when he was a kid and he was playing for Newell's Old Boys youth team, that like their team, their youth team was so good um, that like people would come just to see the youth team. He would do like tricks for the crowd and stuff like that. It's really cool. He started playing, look at this. The guy, like, he's very, you can see in this film, right, he's not very big, and he's also very young at the time that he was, like, he started playing pro uh, for Barcelona when he was 17, right? There he is right there, Lionel Messi, with all our other, there's, there's our guy, right there, there he is, Andres Nocioni. The, uh, the trophy that the gentleman is holding right there. I'm not sure, I think this is like probably a replica of it, but they have it here like attached to a cable so that you can like hold it. It's either the actual one or it's a replica, but either way, it's very cool. Ballon de Oro, the Ballon de Oro is the trophy every year given to the greatest, the person who's considered to be the greatest player in the world. And he got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The Botin de Oro. Botin de Oro, given to the uh, top goal scorer, top goal scorer in the European leagues, Messi, one, two, three, four, five, six. So, like I meant, like I said, for those of you who uh, maybe don't follow soccer and you're not quite sure how, how great Messi really was, that's all you need to know right there won the uh, trophy given to the best player in the world eight times, won the trophy given to the top goal scorer in the European leagues six times. Amazing. Amazing. Macy's jersey, 2008. 2008 Beijing Olympics jersey. Messi, 2021. 
Copa America jersey. And there it is right there. The World Cup jersey. Messi's 2022 World Cup jersey. Well, like I said, I think we've seen, I think we've seen everything there is to see here. Uh, yeah. We saw a lot of really cool, messy stuff. We saw a lot of other cool sports stuff. We saw that like super cool uh, rally car thing with the screens. That was really impressive. And also, we saw some stuff for our guy Andres Chapu Nocioni, which I thought was very, very cool to see. And I think that's gonna be it for the video. What can you say, honestly, about uh, Lionel Messi? He's one of the one of the greatest soccer players of all time. Definitely one of the top three uh, here in Argentina, along with Diego Maradona, who we made some videos about, and probably Mario Kempes, who we didn't make any videos about, but still, still a great player. So I think that's gonna be it. That'll be it for the video. Saw some very, very cool stuff here. If you're coming to this museum, uh, like I mentioned, it's free, and uh, you just need to reserve a, like, a certain time to visit online and uh, very impressive. I, I highly, highly recommend this. Definitely come to this museum, check it out. It is 100% worth it. Hope you enjoyed the video, and we will see you in the next one.